Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel Be Fade to Grey and uh, just uh, an update on my job situation um, uh, I'm now officially unemployed I, uh, I finished my most recent contract yesterday uh, after about seven weeks there so uh, I'm just back in Style Woods walking my crazy dog So uh, it's uh, seven weeks since I sat in this exact spot uh, telling you about my new job which was starting and uh, all my hopes and aspirations for that. Um, so just a quick update on what's happened. Um, I finished yesterday, I was told last week that uh, I'll be finishing yesterday, Tuesday. Um, which I was a bit surprised about to be honest because um, there's only five of us in the finance team where I work and one lad, um, the lad that was brought in to mentor uh, because he'd just been newly promoted, um, he handed his notice in about two weeks ago. So the finance team of five is down to four. So the last thing I expected was, uh, you know, for me to be told that uh, my contract was finishing. But um, yeah, I was I was told last week that um, you know I, I, I'm going to have to leave in a week. Um, so about three weeks after I started, uh, a new head of finance uh, was appointed. Um, and I think it's his decision along with his boss that um, they just simply can't afford any interim help anymore. Um, I, think, I think it's more of a cost um, decision more than anything else. You know, it's not cheap hiring contractors. Um, you know, and I think, I think this new finance manager just feels that, uh, sorry, not finance manager, I think this new head of finance just feels that, you know, you can cope with the existing team, but you know, if, uh, a team of five people going down to, going down to three, um, I think he's got a bit of a bit of a tall order because th this lad that handed his notice in, he actually went on holiday for two weeks straight after handing his notice in. So he's going to be back for like four days and then he's leaving. So there's, there's not going to be much of a handover. Um, but it's not my decision. It's the decision of, of the head of finance. If he thinks he can cope, that's fine. But um, yeah, so I'm I'm effectively uh, back on the job market. Uh, Again, after six, seven weeks of uh, of being employed, so um, but I mean, my attitude to it now is is different to what it was. Um, you know, when I was out of work for those four months uh, prior to getting this this, this latest interim role, um, I'm not going to uh, seek another interim role. I'm going to try and get a permanent finance job within the public sector. Even if that takes me six, nine months, I'm just I'm just. You know, sick and tired of being a contractor, interviewing for a new role every, you know, four to six months. It's uh, I'm, I'm just getting just getting sick of it. When you, when you're a contractor, you're constantly having to hustle for work, both when you're out of work and when you're in work. You know, when you, when you're in work, you're having to hustle for more work because more often than not, the reason why you came into the business to start with that soon evaporates. You know, someone's on sick, someone's on maternity leave. You know. There's a permanent appointment that hasn't started yet, and you're just covering while they start. Um, but very quickly, that that kind of evaporates. So you're constantly having to hustle for you know for for, for more opportunities within the business. And, I, and I've done that at this is at the place I've just left. You know, um, you know, tried to sell my skill sets. But um, you know, I think this new head of finance just wants to you know lead the team in his own way. So uh, you know, that's 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 his call. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, I've made the decision now that I'm, I'm not going to apply for any more interim roles. I'm, I'm going to just apply for government jobs through the civil service jobs website. I'm not applying for jobs on LinkedIn or, or any other job websites because I'm not convinced that most of these jobs actually exist. I think, I think a lot of these agencies that advertise are just CV farming. Um, and sometimes, even if a role's filled, they'll still leave the, the, the adverts up there just, just to get applicants and CVs on file. Which, to be honest, is a waste of time because just because someone's looking for a job now doesn't mean they're going to be looking for a job in three months' time. You know, so, so harvest, harvesting CVs at any particular point is just a waste of time. You know, um, people, people's employment situation changes all the time. Um, so I don't, I don't understand why companies are doing that I, d I don't know whether it's, it's actually true that they are doing it or not i've seen i've seen a lot of videos you know on youtube where people are kind of saying a lot of these jobs are ghost jobs and, and companies and recruiters are just cv uh, harvesting but i don't see the point of that I, re I really don't you know if you've got a job advertise for it 
interview for it and, and appoint somebody. Don't don't mess people about and waste time advertising for jobs that don't exist and and harvesting CVs that are going to be quickly out of date within a few months. It just it just seems pointless. But um, so the advantage of applying through the civil service jobs website is that I'm assuming that these are real jobs and that uh, you know they're only going to post a job that they actually want to fill. So um, I'm going to put my all into it. Uh, I'm not just going to apply for every job going. I'm going to limit myself to you know one or two jobs a week and really put my all into the application, uh, read the job description thoroughly and match my experience to each element of the job description. That's, that's, that's the, the best way to secure an interview from what I've heard is, is just make sure that you know the experience that you put on the application mirrors the job description and the, the person specification. <coughs> Because, you know, you could have the most brilliant CV in the world, but if, if your experience doesn't match the job description and the person specification, you're not, you're, they're not going to progress your application. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to spend a lot of time making sure that my application's spot on, and uh, hopefully I should get an interview uh, on the back of that. So, um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's um, you know, a lovely sunny September morning here uh, in Style Woods, just uh, about 20 miles south of Manchester, not far from the airport, actually. Uh, it's literally a couple of miles from the runway. You can, you can walk from where I am here to um, to the edge of the of the, the runway at Manchester Airport. But um, yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't know uh, here because it's um, it's just lovely and peaceful and quiet. But um, but yeah, so that's just uh, an update. I shall, I'm gonna I'm gonna post regular videos just just with updates on you know phone calls I have with agencies, uh, any emails that I get from uh, the civil service jobs website, any interviews that I get, and and any jobs that uh, I think of applying. I'm gonna. I'm going to document my, you know, my journey in finding, finding this permanent job because hopefully once I land a permanent civil service job with the government that, that will be the end of my job, of my job search. Uh, I, you know, I, I really want uh, that job once I get it to last until I retire. Um, I'm, I'm sick of you know, just constantly interviewing for new roles every, every six months and be messed about by employers and recruiters. It's, you know, I've had enough of it. Um, so. Yeah, day one of uh, no longer being an interim contractor and uh, day one of uh, my mission to find a permanent government job. Well, it's not day one because I started about um, I started about 10 days ago, didn't I, with, with the application. But um, yeah, it's certainly day one of the end of me being a contractor. So um, so yeah, a bit, bit of a pivotal, mo pivotal moment in my career. But um, yeah, stay with me on the journey and uh, hopefully... Uh, I'll, I'll land that permanent government job, and uh, that'll be it. that'll be the end of my job hunting. So, uh, so stay with me. Um, just wanted to give you an update on why my role's finished. I, it's not it's not by choice. Um, I was quite happy to stay, but um, and, and I thought under the circumstances with this with this with this guy leaving that uh, there'd be you know a stronger chance of, of staying more than more than more than there was before. But uh, no. Uh, the finance team of five is now down to finance team of three. So, um, but it, it's not my problem. And um, you know, best of luck to uh, to the new head of finance in uh, in managing that situation. So, thanks for watching. And uh, if you haven't already, check out uh, some of my previous videos. The video that I recorded um, with Dr. Abdul Farouk, the the life of a GP. I really enjoyed doing that, and um, it, it's had a good reception on the channel. People. You know, people seem to have really liked it. And I've got I've got a lot of new a lot of new viewers through that video. So um, it's something I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and try and continue just reaching out to people who've got an interesting life story to tell, or um, you know who, who are suffering in the in the UK job market like I am. I think um, you know it, 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 it's interesting to, to to speak out and reach out to people. So if you're in, if you're in that situation, if you've got an interesting story that you'd like to tell. Uh, please, please reach out. My contact details uh, are in my bio, so uh, just send me a quick email. I, I do reply to all my emails. Um, you know, I, I'm always grateful if people email me directly with, with, with what, whatever they've got to say, just comments about about my content or about their experience or, or anything else. I, I always do reply, to it and every email is welcome. So, um, if you've got a story to share, then uh, then please reach out, and I'll, I'll uh, if uh, if you if you're happy to do so, I'll. Uh, I'll record an interview, and because um, I, th I think you know that that's the way forward, really. I think I think looking at looking at what's proving popular on YouTube now is um, people just documenting the per the personal life experience. You know, um, 
I know there's room for the Mr. Beasts and all the rest of it do, doing, you know, their, their crazy stunts and producing, you know, highly illicit content. But I, I also think that there's, there's a growing market for, for videos like this, where people are just documenting their, their life experience and, and, and what they're going through currently, because it, it's just reassuring to other people who are watching the content that, that they're, not, they're not alone. And, um, you know, there's other people out there going through a similar experience. So uh, if you've got anything you'd like to, if, if you've got uh, something that you'd like to share, then please, uh, please reach out, email me, and I, I will get back to you. We can have an informal chat uh, over WhatsApp. And then uh, if you're happy to do so, we can, we can go ahead and, and, and record a formal interview. Like I say, that, that last interview that I did with uh, Dr. Abdul Farouk was really good. He really enjoyed it, I really enjoyed it, and it's had a really good reception on my channel. And uh, it's opened a lot of people's eyes, to be honest, as, as to um, the state of the NHS, the NHS in the UK, and uh, you know, blown the myth that uh, you know, being a doctor in the UK is you know, it's a job for life. It's not, and I, I know a lot of, a lot of uh, newly qualified doctors can't even get permanent jobs. They're working as locums. Which is, I think, is just a, a, an NHS term for uh, you know an interim doctor. They're just basically doing what I'm doing, but as a doctor. And uh, I, I think some of them aren't, aren't even being able to, you know, make enough money to, to live. They, they, they do, they, they're working as a as a low from doctor, and, and then they're doing you know Uber Eats and um, you know working at Tesco's as well. So it's just, it's just crazy. Um, excuse me, my dog's just going berserk, but uh, yeah, she's you, you know she's crazy anyway. You can, you hit my dog anyway. Bella! Quiet. So it, it, it was really interesting talking to Dr. Farouk and, and learning about, um, you know, the experience that, that, you know, that even newly qualified doctors are going through. Because I think, I think a lot of people watching that video will be surprised that, um, you know, newly qualified doctors are having to resort to, you know, working for Uber Eats or, you know, stacking shelves in Tesco just to make ends meet. Uh, it's quite, quite a shocking state of affairs. And, that's certainly not the case in other in other developed countries, um, but it's all down to the way the government funds the NHS. Unfortunately, uh, healthcare in the UK is, is 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 dominated by the UK government. They they do set the salaries and and, and, and how people are employed within the healthcare sector. And from from speaking to uh, Abdul, um, they're actually prefer giving preferential treatment to to other healthcare professionals. They they they're, they're giving GP surgeries, ring fenced funding to uh, employ non, non, non doctors, so nurse practitioners, clinicians, physiotherapists, you know, other healthcare professionals other than GPs, other than qualified doctors, which, which is shocking. So you've just got, you've just got this, um, th this ever growing pool of newly qualified doctors who can't find jobs. And uh, you know, Abdul, Abdul lives in London and he can't find a job. You're thinking, you're thinking, you know, someone like London, there'd be, there'd be Plenty of opportunities for a newly qualified doctor, but that, that isn't the case. Um, you know, he's he's he's, uh, he's struggling to find work. He's you know he's working as a locum. He's taking to social media to try and you know um, develop an income stream that way. Um, it's it's just a, a really shocking state of affairs, unfortunately. And uh, I, I think the lesson to take away from that is that um, you know everybody kind of needs to future-proof the career because just just having one source of income and one job. Um, you just cannot rely on that anymore um, in the UK in 2024. You know, if, if you've got just one source of income and that, that income, that, that, that job disappears, you know, certainly, certainly, at, you know, at my time of life in your 50s, then, um, you know, you're, you're, in a, you're in a tight spot, you know, if, particularly if you're going to be out of work for, for months and months, you know, you, you, you do need a, a, a second, third, fourth income stream just, just, just to cover that eventuality. So, um, yeah, it's it's all about it's all about future proofing your career. Uh, I think that that's a lesson that I took away from that video with uh, Dr. Farouk. It's it's future proofing your career and um, you know making sure that if you do lose your job, then you've got other you've got other sources of income. I know I know it's easier said than done, but uh, it's, it's it's very easy to be lulled into a false sense of security when you've got a permanent job, particularly if it's a well-paid job, to think that um, you know you're going to be on that level of income forever, and uh, you know possibility that, that you won't be is, is, is very real um, so so you know I think I think what we could all take away from that video is um, it's future-proofing our career and, and try to develop numerous income streams um, you know 
just just to make sure we have got something if, if one income stream you know doesn't work out we can fall back on something else anyway i'm rabbiting on um this, i think this video has gone up to 15 minutes now so uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna i am gonna say goodbye and uh, carry on walking my dog because she's getting a bit anxious now um so um thank you for watching uh, if you haven't already please uh, have a look at some of my, some of the other content that, that's on my channel and uh and uh, from day one of uh, me being unemployed, I'm going to sign out and uh, I'll, I'll keep you posted. But uh, thanks so much indeed for watching and uh, goodbye.